Hi guys, if you watched my last video or if you read the title of this video, you obviously know that we are expecting our first baby this September, September 2021, which also explains why I've been pretty MIA on YouTube and just kind of in the internet world the last few months. So I wanted to share a recap of my first trimester. I'm actually 18 weeks already, which is insane. So I'm quite a bit into my second trimester already, but I feel like all the first trimester stuff is still super fresh and I wanted to just chat about it. So I found out that I was pregnant on December 30th and the entire week before I had been having super vivid dreams that I was pregnant. And in every single one, I would take a test and it would be positive and then I'd wake up and it just all seemed so real, it was so crazy. So like right before Christmas morning, I had a dream that I took a test, it was positive, it was Christmas in my dream. So I wrapped the test up with wrapping paper and put it under the tree for my husband to open on Christmas morning. So I wake up Christmas morning and I was like, I need to test right now. So I get up, I think it was like 6 a.m. or something crazy. I take a test and it was negative, which I was expecting because it was really, really, really early at that point. But the, but the dream was just so real that I had to try. So basically that entire week I slept so terribly. My mind was just racing. I kept having all these dreams. I would wake up a lot, which is not normal for me. I don't frequently wake up in the middle of the night. But other than that, other than the crazy dreams and like restless sleep, I didn't have any other symptoms before I actually took a test. So on December 30th, I got a positive test. I was actually only three weeks and four days, so super, super early still. But I felt like a crazy person that whole week. Like I could not focus on anything else. I couldn't think about anything else. I just, Felt like I was pregnant even though I didn't have any symptoms and I just like needed to test. So I shared my reaction, my live reaction to finding out I was pregnant and when I told my husband. That's all in my last video which I will link above if you want to go watch that. But we were so excited and I was actually so surprised by how attached I felt to this baby like right from the very first second. And right at the very beginning, I told my husband that I thought it was a girl. Like 20 minutes after I took the test, I was like, I think it's a girl. And I felt that way the whole time. We're not actually gonna find out what we're having. Um, it's gonna be a surprise when the baby comes, but I've just felt like it's a girl. I'm pretty much always wrong when other people have babies about what it is, so we will see. But I've just felt like it was a girl the whole time. So I didn't have any symptoms really, and then week seven hit and all of the symptoms came at once and I pretty much felt so horrible. I was extremely nauseous all day long. Like most people say, morning sickness doesn't just last in the morning. Typically I would wake up, have to eat immediately, and then for two or three hours after breakfast I would feel relatively decent, um, but the rest of the day I felt pretty much horrible. I never actually threw up a single time throughout my pregnancy so far, but I, there was times where I thought that I would feel better if I actually threw up instead of just the constant nausea. And then I had horrible food aversions, and I've heard people talk about food aversions. I always just kind of assumed that people were adverse to like one or two or maybe even five to ten foods. I had food aversions to every single food that existed in the entire world, basically. There were maybe like five foods total that I could eat and that went on for weeks and weeks. Even foods that were like my very favorite foods, even like bread just sounded disgusting. Um, so that was actually really hard because I knew that the food aversions and the lack of eating was contributing to the, the sickness and I, I was just in this cycle and I knew that. And every time I would eat, my nausea would immediately go away for 30 to 60 minutes, but it was just so hard to eat. Basically, I couldn't tolerate anything except saltine crackers, applesauce, oatmeal, fresh fruit, but fresh fruit in Canada in January and February is so, so expensive and I would drink smoothies occasionally, and that was it. That was all I ate for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I had major aversions to water, and I typically love drinking water. It's the only thing I usually drink. Couldn't drink a sip of water, so it was all just really hard. And then I was so exhausted, like a level of exhaustion that I could not understand or imagine or even explain. Thankfully, I work from home and my schedule is super, super flexible, so I would sleep 12, 10 to 12 hours every single night, and then I would still crash on the couch sometime in the afternoon and, and just lay on the couch for several hours before going to bed. I feel like I'm just spending this video complaining, but I'm just telling you the honest truth about my first trimester, which was pretty rough. Um, basically, any simple tasks like showering or 
doing the dishes or anything like that. Going to the grocery store just felt like running a marathon. It was so much work. I They, they would just completely drain me. And I couldn't really nap. My husband would always be like, go take a nap, but I just, I can't nap. I don't sleep during the middle of the day. Anything like reading or doing puzzles or any kind of like quiet sitting activities like that, I just like did not have the brain power for. I could basically watch TV and I don't really even like watching TV. I'm not a TV or movie person. Um, I tried a few Netflix shows, just like couldn't get into them. I ended up just watching Little House on the Prairie for a couple weeks every evening. And honestly, that season was really, really difficult and really lonely. I had to give myself so much grace during those few weeks, which really felt like a long time. And I think that I did a pretty good job of that, all things considered. I just kept reminding myself that this is just a season, and even if it does last for 40 weeks, even if I am someone who has a really hard pregnancy, it's still just a season, it's not the rest of my life, it's not gonna last forever, and eventually I will feel better. And I just kept telling myself that over and over and over again. Then I would also just keep reminding myself that my body was creating a human. And not only is it creating a human, but at the time, during your first trimester, it's growing your placenta, which is a organ. So my body was just putting out so much energy doing that, and I just kept reminding myself over and over again, this is my full-time job right now. If I can't do anything else, this is enough. And that's really, really hard when you are like someone who likes to be productive and <laughs> get things done. But I would just remind myself that over and over and over again. So all of that lasted from about week seven until week 15. So well into my second trimester. When I was approaching my second trimester, like weeks 11, 12, 13, everyone kept saying like, it'll be better soon. You'll feel better soon. And then weeks, week 13 like came and went, week 14, week 15, and I did not feel better. And I was so discouraged at that point, I just felt like I was going to be one of those people that just was sick their entire pregnancy. And spoiler alert, I, felt, I feel so much better now, um, but we'll wait until my second trimester video to chat about that. But it was just really, really hard and really draining, and I just didn't see an end in sight. So we actually decided to tell people relatively early. I know everyone does this differently. Um, most of my closest friends actually knew within the first week or so. Several of them are also pregnant, so I just knew that it would be so special to share that and I knew that I wouldn't want to keep it a secret and I'd want to be able to talk about all the things that were happening and my thoughts and everything like that. And I actually hated having it as a secret. I know some people feel like that's really exciting. They like that it's just them and their partner that knows. I hated it. I hated people not knowing. I hated not being able to talk about it freely with everybody. And I was just eager for people to know. We actually ended up telling family a little bit later, mostly because we wanted to tell my parents on my dad's birthday. Um, which was the first week of February. So I sent them a package. I'll add in a photo of what we sent them, but I, we sent them a package. All of our family lives on the other side of the country for, from us, so it wasn't an option to tell people in person. So I sent them this package and it took forever to arrive. It missed his birthday. I was super upset. I cried. I actually haven't been overly emotional during this pregnancy. I would say I've been less emotional almost than I am normally, which has been strange. But a few days later, he finally got his package and then they opened it with us on FaceTime. And so then the same evening we told Quinton's family and then we called Quinton's brother and both of my brothers. So then all of our family pretty much knew at the same time. And it's the first grandbaby on both sides of the family, which has been super exciting and super fun for us. We feel like everyone is so excited and we're so grateful. So we told all of our family right around nine weeks and then we decided to announce on social media right around the same time, which I know is much earlier than people choose to do. But I always knew that I'd probably want to announce a pregnancy earlier on social media. I'm not really a private person. I kind of would rather just be honest and talk with people about what's going on. I always knew that even if anything happened, I would want people to know, I would want that support and I wouldn't want it to be a secret. And I totally respect that everyone has different opinions about that, but that's just what we wanted to do. Okay, I'm gonna give a little trigger warning for the next part about bleeding, if that's not something you wanna listen to. But around 12 weeks, I was home, it was the middle of the day, I was actually having a good day, I was making lunch, and then all of a sudden I felt like a gush of blood, and it felt like 
when your period starts and you don't catch it, it was that sa exact same feeling. So I go to the bathroom and I had like quite a lot of blood. So I just froze and I didn't know what to do. I was totally panicked. Quinton was thankfully off work that day, but he was out with a friend at the time, so I texted him. I couldn't even muster up the strength to pick up the phone and call him. I just knew that I wouldn't be able to get my words out, so I texted him, I'm bleeding, you need to come home right now. So then I right away tried to get a hold of my midwife, and she didn't answer right away. She ended up just, she was with a client, it's no big deal. Um, she called me back within a few minutes, but I just didn't know what I should do. I didn't know if I should go to the ER, I didn't know. Um, if it was concerning or not, it felt very concerning to me. I actually had an appointment booked the next day for her. That was just when my next appointment was. Um, so she so she gave me the option of either waiting until the next day and she could check on baby and heartbeat and everything, or she said she could write a requisition for me to go for an emergency ultrasound right away, which is what we chose to do. So Quinton came home. He actually was with his friend because our car was parked at his friend's house and they were out together. Um, so we ended up going with a friend to the emergency ultrasound, which was not super ideal. I was not in a good headspace and it just like wasn't, it just like wasn't really a time where you want another person around. So, so the friend ended up driving us across the city to the ultrasound appointment, which was fine, <laughs> not super ideal, but I'm grateful that we were able to go right away and everything was fine. The ultrasound tech right away put the Doppler on my stomach and she right away told us that the baby had a heartbeat and then she showed us everything and the baby was happy and kicking and everything looked perfect and we still to this day have no idea what caused the bleeding. Um, I know that it can be super common to have bleeding during pregnancy. It was just very alarming. I was very, very panicked while it was happening. Um, and at one point I definitely thought that we were losing the baby. And thankfully Quinden was able to come into the ultrasound. We had had a previous ultrasound and he had to wait in the waiting room and then he came in for the very end of it. This time they just let him come right in. Um, and it was actually kind of nice because our first ultrasound was terrible. The ultrasound tech was not friendly. She didn't really show us anything. She hardly said anything to us. She hardly spoke English. It was not a good experience. We left actually kind of feeling like something was wrong and she couldn't tell us. It was just a very disappointing first look at our child. So it was actually nice having the second ultrasound. We were not going to do a 12 week ultrasound. We were gonna wait till our anatomy scan to see baby again. Um, but because our first ultrasound was such a negative experience, it actually was nice to see baby again. So since that 12 week-ish mark, we haven't had any concerns. Everything has been totally perfect. So we will be going forth with a home birth with a midwife. We've also hired a doula and I do ask that if you have opinions or thoughts about that, that you keep them kind and positive. Um, just as I prepare myself for this, I would prefer to only have positive comments regarding birth outcomes. I know not everybody is a fan of home birth, but that is what we'll be doing and we're really, really, really excited about it. So in a few weeks or so, I guess I'll be back with my second trimester update. I feel like the second trimester is going to go pretty quickly. Um, but we're so excited. Baby is due September 2021 and we're just really excited about it and I'm excited to share more of the journey with you guys. Let me know if there's anything specific you'd love to hear about. Um, I promise that my channel will not become only about pregnancy and baby things, but in this season of my life, that's just a big part of what's going on. So you can expect to see some of that content occasionally. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.